Welcome to our In Focus discussion tonight on extending RECA for downwinders. So many stories define the Utah of today. Brigham Young's pioneer wagon train first arriving, the joining of the Transcontinental Railroad, the state's role in women's suffrage, and the Topaz internment camp. Another story is the dawn of the nuclear age. Uranium mining and atomic testing took place across the Southwest, and the effects of those experiments and actions are still lingering today. Joining us to talk about the people affected by nuclear testing and mining are Mary Dixon, a downwinder and advocate, and Kel Weston, author, teacher, and son of a downwinder. Mary and Kel, thank you so much for joining us and welcome back to the show. Thank you, thanks so much for having us. It's a very important issue. Yes, thank you. Kel, let's start with you. Can you share with us your downwinder story and how you were impacted? Yeah, like a, a lot of uh, Utah families, but well beyond Utah, my father was designated an official downwinder. He received a letter from our government and tragically, and still an issue my family and I are working through, my dad passed away uh, last May at Huntsman. And I think our family is just one family among many, many, many others who are now trying to speak up uh, and say how important the reauthorization is for uh, many families uh, beyond Utah and Mary I know will talk about her story um, but my mother had five aunts uh, who passed away of cancer mostly leukemia they also grew up in rural Utah and I think the one story I, I want to highlight is that when my dad uh, was near near death at Huntsman he said you know of the five uh, newspaper delivery boys uh, in Milford at the time all five of them got cancer so I'm not an actuary I'm not a numbers guy but I'm here to help bring attention, I think, to a crucial issue along with my friend Mary. Yeah. So sorry to hear about your loss. Mary, you've been on our show before, yes. I believe back in February, to share your story about being a downwinder. Can you right. share with us how being a downwinder affects you personally and on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh my gosh, it, it has totally shaped my life. Um, I have thyroid cancer, I've lost family members, I've lost friends, I've lost neighbors, coworkers, all the people I worked on this issue with so hard in Utah, I'm the only one still alive. So I feel this real obligation to keep doing this work and lately with these bills being introduced, it's kind of become my full-time job. Now we're talking about this is a life impacting issue. Like those who have been affected through being a downwinder, it's changed your life completely. And so this is why we need to talk about this issue and talk about how it's impacted. Um, Kale, let's talk about how widespread the issue is. Who was downwind and who was affected by the mining? Well, if, if, if I could put a big map behind me, and I know Mary will speak to this, it, it's not just one or two counties, it's not just one or two states. And thank you for putting the image up. If you follow the way the, the nuclear radiation went, um, as we've seen with the smoke from the Western California fires, it's hard to stop that kind of flow once it starts. So if you look at the map, uh, we're all basically downwind. And I think that's why this legislation is so crucial, is that it shows that the original appropriation, which was passed in 1990, um, didn't cover enough families. And really, this isn't just about numbers and dollars, it's about people, it's about families, it's about uh, Utahns, but, but others outside of Utah who are hoping to get a government that will, will listen and do the right thing. And it's really grim that that map was colored in red just to show how deadly, and we're talking about long-term impacts here, right? When we're thinking about impacts, this was not something that just happened immediately right away. So it's hard to kind of measure that impact because it's happening. It's still happening to this day, right? Decades yeah. later as well. Mary, I want to bring you into this conversation. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there is a lack of common public knowledge about the impact of downwinders. Can you put this into perspective why this issue is still so important and um, maybe how many people are still being impacted, whether it's firsthand or secondhand from this issue? I'm happy to. Um, the thing I'm always telling people is this issue is not over. People are still getting sick. Their cancers are coming back. They're being diagnosed with new cancers. They still have huge medical bills. Families are affected. I mean, you're infected, affected your whole life once you've had a cancer diagnosis. Uh, so this is not something that's ended. It's something that's still very much current history. And it saddens me that so many people who are downwinders will never know they were. 
Um, and that's really hard. It's, it's been part of my mission is to increase awareness about that because you can never say how many downwinders there were. We will never really know. But we do know this for certain. There are far more than were ever, ever acknowledged. Yeah, because that impact, and like we saw on that map, yeah. it was so widespread across the country. So something that I'm learning as well is that there are individuals who may have suffered from these long-term impacts and never had that answer, never had that explanation, never had that closure as to why. Why am I suffering from these effects? And that is devastating also on that data collection part. We'll always have those mm -hmm. underrepresented numbers. Mm. Okay, we're just touching the surface here. Mary and Kel, hold that thought. We do have to take a quick commercial break, but when we return, We'll resume our in-focus discussion on extending RECA for downwinders. Thanks for staying with us for our second in-focus discussion tonight on extending RECA for downwinders. We're back with Mary Dixon, who is a downwinder herself, and Kel Weston, who is the son of a downwinder. In this segment, we will talk about the legislation called RECA. Let's start with you, Mary. So sure. we want to talk about the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, which is what RECA stands for. What was acknowledged with the program and how much compensation is offered and who is it for? Sure, happy to do that. Okay, currently RECA offers $50,000 to downwinders in a very limited geographic area. So counties, some counties in Utah, Arizona and Nevada. It's never been extensive enough. It was always a flawed bill and there has been work on this for I would say three decades now to try and get it expanded to be more comprehensive and that's exactly what these bills will do. Um, the House bill was signed on to by Burgess Owens and Chris Stewart. It has co-sponsors throughout the country. Uh, the Senate bill was introduced by Senator Crapo of Idaho, Senator Lujan of New Mexico. Uh, one thing that it does is it adds all of Utah, all of Arizona, all of Nevada, plus New Mexico, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Guam. Uh, uh, just one thing to say to people is that the hottest county was Washington County in Utah, second hottest county was Gem County in Idaho, third hottest county was in Montana. So the West was greatly impacted and yet most downwinders have not ever received compensation. They're not eligible. To get the compensation, you have to prove you lived in those counties for certain years and that you've got one of 18 kinds of cancer. Um, the, the really hard thing right now is RECA is set to expire next July and without it, the program's over, that's it. So there is real urgency to this right now. So Mary gave us a recap of the original legislation and a preview of the new proposed legislation, which we will dive into a little bit more in our third segment. So Kale, I want to go back to that original legislation that Mary was talking about, right? So $50,000 for each person who is identified as a downwinder. In your opinion, do you feel like that is enough compensation. Are the benchmarks for qualifying in a good spot? Well, how do you, how do you put a price on, a, yeah. on an American life when <coughs> American policy uh, included a lot of nuclear tests all around us? So, you know, my dad got his, well, my mom now has a $50,000 check in the bank. And of course, if any of us could return that and have more years, we, we would take it. Um, so I don't think it's about dollars and cents as much as a right and a wrong. You know, I believe that governing and as someone who represented our federal government in the State Department for almost 11 years in two war zones, seven of those years in Iraq and Afghanistan, a lot of this boils down to what's the right thing to do. And as Mary said, there's urgency here. So whether it's 50000 or 150000 I can tell you my dad's huntsman's bill uh, luckily was covered, but it's a heck of a lot more than $150,000. So. I just think our government's trying to find its conscience on this issue, and I hope that every member of the Utah congressional delegation finds their conscience and stands up and, and does the right thing. One final point, um, the Defense Department budget, and I spent a lot of time overseas working closely with our military, especially the Marine Corps. Our Defense Department budget this year is $700 billion. Uh, one aircraft carrier, the new fancy model, is about a $13 billion price tag. So far, 38,000 families, including my own, have been given about $2.5 billion, 2.4 actually, so it's less than that. So if we're going to look at perspective, I think that's a helpful uh, frame. 
Well, Mary, RECA is set mm -hmm. to expire soon. You yeah. know, we know that obviously, like Kel said, how do you put a price on mm -hmm. human life? But what are some other benefits that might come with extending this legislation? Like I'm thinking about outreach, right? I'm thinking about all those mm -hmm. individuals, like you said earlier, who yeah. may not even know that this is a possibility for all the long-term symptoms that they're going through. Can you think of other benefits, that, uh, other than the monetary compensation sure. that would come from extending RECA? Sure, and it's really never been about the money. As, as Kale said, no amount of money is going to bring my sister back. It's not going to bring my friends back. Um, so it's not about the money. It's an acknowledgement from our government that we were harmed by our government, knowingly harmed. They knew where that fallout went. They knew people were getting sick, and they did it anyway. So to me, that's one of the huge benefits of this. And it will also mean that all these people who have suffered in other Western states will now have some recourse. It also adds uranium miners who worked post-1971. They're currently not covered. Many of them are on native lands. They are having a very hard time um, financially. Uh, it will make a big difference from them that way. It also adds medical coverage which is huge. But again, Rosie, the most important thing is that they are righting what was a horrible wrong. This is a huge scar on our national history. Yeah, very much so. Kale, what do you think needs to be done on a maybe logistical view to get more people to be aware, to be knowledgeable about downwinders? How, so we talked about outreach. How do we execute that outreach? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, you know, for all of us who have been touched by the tragedy of, of downwinders, we're, we're doing our part to get stories. Again, it, these are human stories. It's not a data chart. It's, it's not even just a map. It's the people who lived below those, ma those maps over many decades. So I think that, you know, pick up the phone if you're watching, listening. Call our member of Congress and say, what is your position on, uh, as Mary said, some of the deepest scar tissue our state has? I, you know, I'm a, a history major, that's what I studied. And if we don't look hard at what went wrong in our country, uh, including this issue, uh, we're never gonna help ensure that we don't repeat it. So it's a conscience mm -hmm. issue, and I think that Utahns overall uh, care about doing the right thing. At least we, we tell each other that. And this is mm -hmm. one way where we can deliver, and I sure hope Senator Romney gets on board. He's got a lot of influence in Washington. He's not yet uh, a co-sponsor. Uh, I believe there are other members of our congressional delegation that need to speak up, stand up, and do the right thing. All and right. if they don't, we need yeah. to ask them two, two, two word question, why not? Mary and Kel, stay with us. We're going to talk yeah. about the proposed bills and what they would do. We'll dive even deeper into those in our last segment. Stay with us, we will be right back. Welcome to our third and final In Focus discussion tonight on extending RECA for downwinders. We pick up now with Mary Dixon and Kale Weston. And in this conversation, I will start with Kale. I'd like to pick back up on the bipartisan bill that is being run on extending RECA. Can you remind us what's in it and whether or not you're happy with the contents in the legislation? You know what I am? I'm a, a proud Democrat in Utah, which is sometimes a hard place to be politically, but there are a lot of Democrats, in fact, more Democrats who are co-sponsoring this legislation. So when something as important as um, nuclear testing uh, that affects so many families, this ought to be uh, a non-controversial uh, position that our politicians take. So I think that the, the, the bipartisan legislation uh, is actually uh, strong and because of that has uh, support across the aisle. Uh, I think that we talked earlier about, well, how much is this going to cost? And I would just urge all of us, if a politician leads off with the price tag is too high, to remind ourselves you're asking families to somehow think that, you know, the life that they've lost is negotiable based on dollars and cents. And again, our, our ability to do the right thing uh, with our huge economy and our, our huge budget is there. But I do like that a Democrat from Oregon is co-sponsoring, a Democrat from Pennsylvania is co-sponsoring, uh, a Democrat you know, from New Mexico, and I sure hope all of our Republicans in Utah do the same thing. It's the right thing to do. Mary, you might want to talk a bit sure. about the specifics, but there's another piece of legislation that Senator Mike Lee has put forward, <coughs> and I think he's footnoting and fudging the issue, but I'll, 
I'll defer to Mary on that. Yeah, Mary, let's bring you in. Can you talk a little sure. bit more about the contents of the bill? Sure, sure. Um, like I said, it's 150000 across the board for claimants. Um, and if you are a downwinder or a uranium mine worker who already applied, you are, will be due that extra money to get you up to 150000 uh, Spouses, children of people who have died may also file um, on that behalf. But I just think it's so incredibly important that Utah's delegation sponsors or at least co-signs co -signs onto this legislation. Uh, because I, I'll tell you, it breaks my heart that our senators have not. It, it, I look at Senator Crapo and Senator Lujan and I thank them for caring about me in Utah. Um, I just want them to have the chance to do the right thing. I really think it's absolutely vital that our entire delegation backs this. There's really no reason not to. Mary, tell us a little bit more about Senator Louie. Well, okay, he has introduced a bill. Um, it is far pared down from the bill that all downwinders, uranium miners, and advocates are um, backing. Uh, that bill only includes counties in Utah and New Mexico. It's for less money. It also makes the timeline only 10 years instead of the 19 years that the Crapo and Lujan bill does. Um, so I, I, I mean, we, we are glad he's saying something on behalf of downwinders, but his bill does not go far enough. It does not do what the other bill that downwinders and others have worked on with these senators for so long does. And Kale and Mary, either one of you can take this question, but Kale earlier talked about the legislation that Senator Lee is sponsoring. So it's not companion legislation, no. it's something else. When, when there's a, a very strong bill that's got strong bipartisan support already, what's the incentive to mix up the issue? And I think Mary highlighted where those differences are not minor, they're significant. So in the ideal world, you know, have us back two months from now and we'll be able to say that our entire congressional delegation uh, has done the right thing. That's where, where we want this issue to go. We don't want to be pointing out where things are lacking and being in government's a hard job, but for me this is a, 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 an issue that would bring us together as a state at a time when mm -hmm. so many other issues divide us. So Kale, Mary did talk about the timeline a little bit. I wanna ask you a little bit more about the timeline. What happens if they don't pass, these bills don't pass by the end of the year? Go ahead, Kale. A lot of families mm -hmm. are gonna be hurting a lot more than they already are. Um, and Mary is, herself is a downwinder. I hope you'll do a close up on her scar. We've talked a lot about right <laughs> metaphorical scar tissue yeah. uh, as a country and a nation that should care about our citizenry even decades after uh, hundreds and over a thousand tests were done, most of which were sold as safe and they were not. So Mary's got the literal scar. My family's got, like a lot of families, some psychological scar tissue about yeah. what it's like to lose your, your dad too soon. So I think we as Utahns need to just get over our apathy. Um, if you've never heard about this issue, learn about it, tell your kids about it. Uh, and then call Senator Romney first, I would argue. Uh, write your members mm -hmm. of Congress and say, what's your position? And if you don't support this, why not? Mary, I'd like to give yeah. the final word to you. What would you like to leave our viewers with tonight or maybe something about RECA and downwinders that we sure. haven't talked about? Um, there are some pretty good chances if you're from this area, um, you were here during the years of above ground testing and had cancer, that you're a downwinder. I think most people still don't know they are. I talk constantly about this and speak about it, write about it, and you wouldn't believe how many people say to me, do you think I'm a downwinder? Oh, I think maybe my mom was. They tell me their stories. They are absolutely heartbreaking. But again, I would say you have a chance here to make something happen that is the right thing to do. It's a matter of social justice. Um, call your representative, call Senator Romney, and ask them to support the House bill. It's 5338. The Senate bill is 2798. Because I always quote a woman who wrote a book called Half Lives and Half Truths. She said nuclear testing did not prevent nuclear war. It was a nuclear war.
And I'm telling you, Rosie, we are the casualties. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your personal stories. And I know it's something that is near and dear to your heart, yeah. and we appreciate your efforts. You've been hearing from downwinder and activist Mary Dixon, an author and child of a downwinder, Kale Weston. Thank you both so much for coming oh. down tonight to have this conversation with us. Thank you, Rosie, thank you. Thank you, and this means a lot to have yeah. 30 minutes or so to talk about an important issue. Yeah. And for all you at home, don't forget, we'd love to hear from you about the show. We invite you to join our Facebook group by searching for ABC4 in Focus, or you can send us an email, infocus at abc4.com.